Hi my friends, in this video we are going to talk about exception handling. When we encounter an error in Python, the code stops being executed at the error line. This is obviously not what we want. For example, sometimes we are trying to upload an image to, to a website, but when an error occurred, we can get some messages like uh, an, an error has occurred. If there was no error handling or exception handling at the backend side, all the features on that website could stop working due to slightest mistake. This is something none of us would want. As we work in Python, we will start to notice in which situations and what kind of errors may occur. And of course, we will take precaution, but we will still use the blocks we call try and accept, despite the errors that we cannot foresee. Let's start without wasting time. The first thing we need to know is that there is not a single error at Python. There are many different types of errors in Python. For example, let's start with the simplest. I create two variables, one of them is a equal to 9 and the second one is equal to 0 and uh, I'm going to do division I run it look at the terminal we get an error let's suppose that we, we created a website with Python and they provided services where users do match operations if one of the users tries to do division, like we tried here, our services will stop working. Because we get an error here and the Python stops working. You may be confused at first, but let me show you one more thing. I will write a uh, hello word here. The, I will run it again. Look at the terminal. Where is the hello word here? What we normally expect is that the print function here will work, but since we got an error, no further code will be executed. Here are the codes whose parameters we can't predict exactly, and uh, which we will write in the try exec block to handle such situations. Let's try what I mean. I will write it try here, and uh, I put a colon. And uh, I will do the division inside the try block. The following question, what if there is an error in the codes uh, we write in the try block? And then we want to run another code when there is an error. Where do we do it? Of course, we will do it within the accept block. So we will write accept and then put a colon and then that's it. I will write a print here. Uh, for example, some error occurred, check, sorry, I put a comma in the wrong place, so just write, check the numbers, and uh, that's it. We didn't change anything here, we'll just use try and accept. Let's run it again. I will try to explain what happened here. It tries to do the division operation, but when it gets an error, it directly executes the code inside the accept block. But the more important thing, this time the code I wrote after, after the try accept block was also executed. We saw hello word here. In other words, the program, I mean the code, didn't stop working after an error occurred. Now I want to talk about catching specific errors. If you look at the terminal, the error we get before we use try and exit block was zero division error. However, if I try to print a variable that I don't define, I will get a different error this time. I will quickly show it and uh, I will continue. For example, Let's try to print a variable which does not exist. 
the sprint x i run it okay we got different error name x is not defined the another error i want to show you is type error if i convert one of these variables to string for example let's convert it to string and i will remove it for now to get an error and uh, i will try to do the same operation and uh, i run it look at terminal on spotted operand type we got an type error because we tried to divide integer by string i will delete it i clean my terminal and uh, i clear my terminal I need to try except block here. For example, I am handling the error that will occur when I try to add different types of objects like adding a string to an integer. So if I just want to catch the type error, I need to write type error next to accept and from now on I will know that if this print works there was a type error let's run it again okay some error occurred so I know that there was a type error because we try to divide it if I remove this string here and uh, try it again look at the terminal this time it never entered in the accept block here and the uh, our program stopped running the reason why it didn't enter in the accept block here because we specified that it will only handle errors when it is type error what if we want to handle it separately when we get an error when we try to divide by zero how can we do it we can handle this error by writing one more except here this time we want to catch zero division error and then we can write for example we can we can send a message to the client to the user and we can say you can't sorry you can divide by zero and uh, that's all we are not going to get an error because we handled it here to summarize very briefly if we don't specify any error type after the except keyword here the codes we wrote in this except block in the except block i mean not this except block will be executed directly when there is an error but we can also write specific codes according to the specific errors as we did here for example we we write different codes here for type errors different code for zero division error and so on so let's run it again look we didn't get an error actually we got an error but it didn't cause our program stop the, the another thing I want to mention we can also use else block here like we use in if statement but when does this else block will work all codes in this else block will be executed if there is no error in try block for example I will write else block worked I will run it this s block didn't work since we get an division error here but if I change 0 to 1 and uh, run it again look s block worked this time to summarize when there is an error it falls into these except blocks but when our codes are successfully executed in the try block the codes we write in the S block will be executed as well. Okay, we continue. We could catch the specific errors here. If we don't specify any error type as we did here, 
But there is an error. If we want to catch what the error is, can we do it? Actually, we can. Okay, I want to show you. I will remove them for now to show you better. Let's write accept and then we write exception. And then I name a variable, let's say error. And then I put a colon. When there is an error, this error will be assigned to this variable and uh, we can access this error by this variable. I will print it to show you better. Just write error and then I will run it. We didn't get an error, but if I change it to zero, let's run it again, division by zero. This comes from here. We were able to catch the error name, error type I mean. If you want to use different approaches according to the error types, then I suggest you to use in this way. I also would like to mention finally keyword. I will write finally here and uh, put a colon. I will print something finally, sorry. Finally, worked. I run it. Yeah. Finally, worked. Okay. We got an error, but the finally block worked. Okay, maybe it's not going to work when there is no error. So I change it to one, so we are not going to get an error. I run it. Finally, blocked worked again, but we didn't get any error. Final block works in all cases, regardless of whether there is an error or not. I mean, if there was an error here or not, the final block would still work. You may be wondering uh, where to use finally. We will see in the following videos, but according to my, my research and uh, my own usage experience, I usually use it to, to close or finish a process I opened. For example, I connect to a database and they're trying to get the data from the database in the try block, but let's say there is an error. Whether there is an error or not, I need to close the database after I get what I want. That is one of the situations I use finally. The database must be closed after we, we did some operations on it. You may think that you can close the database directly without using finally. I mean, you can write the, the same code here. You are actually right, but when you use finally, you write a more organized and readable code. So far, we have seen how to handle Python's errors, but how do we do if we want to write errors for certain situations ourselves? We will use the raise keyword for that, just like return. For example, let's let's write a function quickly. I will write addition and then it will take two parameter. We can define a condition here like if a equal to zero or b equal to zero, we need to raise an exception. So we can write like raise exception and uh, we write the message that we want to show to the user. Let's say zero has no effect. If A or B is zero, then we will raise the exception. If not, we will return the sum of it. I will clean my terminal and uh, I will call this function addition and uh, I will pass two parameters. Let's say five, five. I run it. Okay, we got the result. There is no problem. But if I pass zero to this function, let's see what happens. Look at the terminal. We got an error, exception. Zero has no effect. We can also determine other types of errors while raising an exception. For example, instead of exception, you can you can raise value error, and uh, 
if I run it again, this is a value error. Or you can you can specify you can de determine a key error. Or you can raise a type error. It is up to you actually, and uh, I will share the error types with you in the description below. I also like to show you another way to raise an exception, which is assert. I will clean my editor. I want to draw your attention to the syntax. We don't put parentheses next to assert. Then it will cause an error if you put a parenthesis. So next to assert, we write conditions that will return a boolean value like true or false. And the assert returns an exception if the condition is false. So let's see what I mean. I will use the variables that I deleted. So let's write and uh, let's say a greater than b. I will also write a hello word here. Let's run it. Okay, we didn't get any error. I mean, the assert didn't break our code here, our program here. If I do the opposite, and then let's run it again, we got the assertion error. And the hello word wasn't printed in the terminal. We can also return a custom message here. So let's say a is less than b. This is the error message. If I run it, we got the message here. a is less than b. But you may ask a question like why do we use assert? Actually, assert has two main uses. It helps detect problems early in your program where the cause is clear rather than later some other operation fails. A type error in Python, uh, for example, can, uh, can go through several layers of code before actually raising an exception, if not caught early on. It works as documentation for other developers reading the code who see the assert and they can confidently say that its condition holds from now on. Another way to look at it is to say that assertions are internal self-checks in your code. They work by declaring some conditions as impossible in your code. If these conditions don't hold, that means there is a bug in the program. So I hope you understood what I mean. I will end the video here. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.